Hello, fellow swivel heads. It's Greg Allison with Green Greg. It's coming to you on the 26th day of March 2021. Time on deck, 204800 hours, Central Daylight Time. Now, there's a lot that we need to be paying attention to. to keep our eyes wide open and head on a swivel going on right now. And I'm going to let one to talk about at this moment. Uh, I just talked about a, uh, six days ago about North Korea. And we're going to return to it because since then, North Korea decided to have a little fun. They went on a little fireworks. They launched some rockets in, in violation of UN Resolution 1718. They launched two ballistic missiles and apparently also two cruise missiles. It's the ballistic missiles that were in violation of UN Resolution 1718 and has caught the uh, ire of uh, President Joe Biden. And <clears throat> as you know, and I reported in my previous video, uh, Kim Jong-un has just decided that uh, he don't want to talk to Biden. He, he, I'm not talking to you. We're not talking to you at all. And they're off doing their own thing, which uh, makes you wonder what they're really up to. Of course, this could be part of their ploy to put uh, him in a tough spot, supposedly, for more negotiations and lifting sanctions and whatever else they're going to want to do. But I've also got to wonder if the time's coming, if there's not something more to it, that uh, you know, they've been moving assets around in North Korea. Some people think they might be getting ready for a move or something to happen. Uh, also, uh, along with this, and another thing I could have been reporting on, and, this, and I'll probably cover it later, China, the People's Republic of China, just flew 20 uh, aircraft warplanes into the uh, air defense uh, identification zone of the Republic of China. AKA Taiwan. And uh, this time, that was, was the biggest incursion ever in the Taiwanese airspace. Now, they've been repeatedly in, in, incursions there, but 20 warplanes this time bombers, fighters, the whole nine yards, in, uh, Intel craft. Um, tensions are ratcheting up. And, you know, the, I said way back last winter that uh, Japan, uh, China probably wouldn't move on uh, re, the Republic of China. Uh, <laughs> Taiwan until after March because of sea states. March is coming to an end. Things are wide open. Who knows? It might be that, you know, uh, one of the one country just might make a move. They all might move at the same time. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to, I'm going to show you some articles on this stuff. We're going to talk about what's going on between Biden and, uh, and little, little Kim. Rocket Man is, uh, <clears throat> as uh, President Trump used to refer to him. You know, I don't call that man Rocket Man. I'm Rocket Man. <laughs> well, Elton John and a few of my buddies, you know, there's quite a few of us have been into rockets. <laughs> all right, all that aside, uh, guys, tensions in the world are crazy. I just did a video in China talking about how if we can just contain things, there's hope in the future. But holy smoke, it may be hard to contain things, my friends. Things are really dicey at the moment, and you need to be prepared. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Get ready. That's what I got to tell you to do. Subscribe to my channel. Bang the notification bell and click all because I want to bring you a lot more videos on this. Keep eyes wide open and head on civil uh, news so that you can uh, survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive, which is a proposition in this channel. It's also why I do videos about uh, growing your own food, something you really need to do. And you can uh, uh, better value yourself for that if you go to my links to True Leaf Market and check those seeds out. But also teach you to eat for free from the weeds in the tree, <laughs> the trees. But you know, you may not get in quite enough calories doing that. Uh, you might find yourself lacking and uh, your garden skills might take a while to get uh, a cracking. So in the meantime, I would suggest that you stock up on long-term food storage. So I got a special deal with that. And yes, this is lightweight. This is two weeks worth of food in this bucket. You can get two of these for a little better than 20% off if you go to prepwithgreg.com. Print with a great gut com. Or you can get one of them just a little slightly under 20% off. Great deals, about 8, 10, 8, 20, uh, 8, 10 to 8, 11 uh, uh, for an uh, entire day's meal, $8.10 or 11 cents for an entire day's meals. Guys, I can't go to uh, a fast food and eat for that. I wouldn't want to eat fast food no way, right? With the junk they got in it. This is real food 2,000 calories a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. With drinks and desserts that'll make you a winner. And it's easy to carry around so that you won't be carrying weight and falling in the ground, but you can uh, put them in your pack. 
that pack. And it's better than a snack. That's four servings. Four servings, my friends. By comparison, this big old can right here, that's only two servings. You want that in your backpack? Uh, it might not feel so great on your back. <laughs> that's why you'd rather pack something that's slack. <laughs> Plywood. <laughs> hey, I like to rhyme. That's my, that's my gig all the time. All right, now, that's a good deal. Go to, uh, go to prepwithgreg.com. And also you can uh, check the uh, My Patriot Supply logo. All kind of prepping supplies in there, my friends. All kind of prepping supplies. If you go there, it helps me and it helps you too. Enough said about all that. So let's get on with this story. <clears throat> in fact, I'm just going to jump straight into some of these websites I'm going to show you. But like I said, I've been telling you about these things. So first, I'm going to show you some of my videos. One way to get an idea about the videos on my channel is when you go to my homepage, you know, take it off home and go ahead and click on videos. And you can go back. For some reason, I can only scan four months back this way. But you can hit the playlist from the homepage. And for some of these videos, it'll take you further back. You can hit play on everything. And that playlist, now my videos are not listed on playlist. I'm going to take some of these videos off here, by the way, just because I think you know, I, I need to focus this on DIY content and all the latest events. Uh, they're only good for a short period of time, so I may start taking them off. But anyway, all that said, look here, it's only six days ago I talked about North Korea. Look at that. <laughs> North Korea's new dangerous game. Um, <clears throat> and the fact that they're not talking to Biden, the fact that they're uh, putting them along, the fact that I'm hearing rumors that they're moving equipment makes you really concerned about what's going on there. Are they getting ready to make a move? And I, what I'm really worried about is, you know, if it might be that China decides they want to hit uh, Taiwan. Oh, yeah, by the way, another news item is that they got 200 ships surrounding a, a, a Filipino reef and uh, Durante, President Durante of the Philippines, is telling him to move. Now, he's a guy that tried to suck up to Xi Jinping, thought it served his purposes. And, and you know, what Xi Jinping did, people sucking up to him? Whoosh, steps on him, squashes him. He don't care. He's, he's for expansionism. He's been very aggressive in his expansionistic nature right now. <clears throat> they got 200 ships around this reef. They're not moving it. Some people think they're about to move in and occupy, it, maybe build one of their little unsinkable aircraft carriers there in, in Filipino waters. Wow. Yeah, that's what China is up to, apparently. <clears throat> Seems like. But also with the stuff they're doing in Taiwan. So what happens if China moves on Taiwan and moves on an island at the same time, uh, North Korea might make a move on South Korea. Maybe Russia has got planned to use that as an excuse to take up some, one or more of the Balkan states. Oh, those are NATO countries, but they're not contingently connected to NATO countries. It would be hard for NATO to go in and roust Russia out. Are we running the risk of all that war over that? Are we running the risk of all that war over Taiwan? What are we going to do? The whole world can come unglued at once. How would America react? Will we just be knocking in our knees? Would we be in a freeze? Would we be on our, on our knees begging please? I don't know what we're going to do if, if it all breaks loose everywhere. The United States is not prepared to handle that kind of situation. The United States would have to make priorities, make choices. What's really important or is any of it important? Well, that's over my pay grade. I'm just telling you that would not be a pleasant time. And it might be that that might be the kind of scenario they would like to play. Maybe a random would make a play at the same time. So the, all these guys might make moves at the same time. It would you know, leave the United States in a conundrum instead of confusion. We would not be able to respond to all of those things. <clears throat> the ones we respond to, we may not respond as well because we're somewhat distracted by the other ones. So it would not be a good situation for us if that happened. All right. but. Joe Biden has decided, President Joe Biden, that he would threaten North Korea. And let's check that out. Bang. Joe Biden threatens North Korea as photos of Kim Jong-un's latest missile launch uh, materialize. And I'll say all that in here. Here we go. Here's a North Korean missile launch right here. Boom, right off the truck. Mobile missiles. And here he is. on he look threatening? He looks like he's about to take on little Kim, <laughs> and this is his very first press conference where he said, hey, he suspected, suspected the ballistic missile test by Pyongyang violated UN Resolution 1718. And he said the United States remained open for diplomacy with the North Korea despite missile test this week, but warned there would be responses if North Korea escalates matters. Hmm. Took some criticism from certain other websites. 
We are consulting with our allies and partners and there will be responses if they choose to escalate. We will respond accordingly, whatever that means. Does that mean that we, we're going to pit new missile launches too? No, I don't think they would do the same thing. We don't have to do that. We, we know our stuff works. Uh, I, I am also prepared for some form of diplomacy, but it has to be conditioned upon the end result of denuclearization. Did President Bush ever say that? Denuclearization. <laughs> hmm. Interesting words, right? So, yeah. Good luck with that one, buddy. Let's see how the other presidents have done with that bid. We're going to, I'm going to take y'all and see Melon Albright here before this video is over. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to shrink the screen down just so I can hit the tab, next tab, because uh, Zoom is fighting me for hitting tabs. <laughs> Here's another article, Global News. North Korea confirms new missile test as Biden warns of consequences of for hostility. <laughs> Again, pretty much the same kind of news here. Uh, uh, North Korea's official Korean Central News Agency said the two new type tactical guided projectiles accurately hit their targets on the Eastern Coast Thursday. Mm. Okay. So there we are. We're going to go. And Japanese officials said both weapons tested Thursday were ballistic missiles. They also tested two cruise missiles. So that was the big one, the, the rocket launches. According to South Korean officials, North Korea fired two other missiles on Sunday, but they were likely cruise missiles, which are not bad. I mentioned that earlier here. All right, so again, not the same language. So let's go to another article. Doing, 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 doing. Flash Gordon needs to come save every one of us. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, guys. Yeah, that's helpful and fun. Gloom and doom is an all. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to lose your head, guys. All right. And this article here, Biden team holds fire after Korean missile launches. So the political has gone saying, well, he's made some threats, but he ain't done anything about it. Uh, Biden's response, business as usual. Yeah, if you escalate, if you escalate, we're going to get you. If you do it again, we're going to get you. You know, have the school, uh, the school kid response when they draw a line in the sand and the bully steps across it and they draw another line in the sand. That's what these guys are thinking. I don't know. <laughs> and while Biden said the test violated UN Resolution 17 and promised to respond accordingly to any escalation, he also left the door open to diplomacy, okay, which may be tricky. Just North Korean leaders rejected repeated out reach attempts from the Biden team. Issued firing warning last week, urging Washington refrain from causing a stink. Yeah, okay, so well, let me see. Um, we're not worried all that. But guys, so they're out here thinking that they can uh, cut diplomacy and then they will somehow get North Korea to denuclearization. And, you know, so uh, the Biden administration is hoping to lean on China China has a critical role to play in working to convince North Korea to pursue denuclearization. One out of court. Denuclearization. <laughs> it has tremendous influence. You know, well, how well has that worked so far? I would hope that whatever happens going forward, China will use that influence effectively to work toward movement in North Korea to denuclearization. Hmm. Hmm. What's funny, that term's popping up everywhere now. <laughs> so, guys, do you see that happening? Well, we had great success back in the 90s. That was achieved. Back in the 90s, they, they reached agreements in North Korea. Not going to build any more uh, nukes. Not going to be testing no more missiles. Miss Madeleine Albright went over there and cut all kind of great deals, and they declared peace and success during the Clinton administration. They got it all sewed up. Madeleine Albright was greeted with great fanfare, like a hero coming to North Korea. And we, we, we cut uh, sanctions on them. Maybe we sent them some money. And what happened? North Korea smiled. They just hit a little bit more and kept building missiles and nukes and eventually started setting them off. <laughs> and right before they started launching stuff and setting them off, our CIA and all our experts says, oh, it's going to be 15 years before they can reach that kind of capability. What happened? You know, a week or two later, boom, boom, boom. 
Ha, 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 guys. <laughs> so, well, South Korea has gotten a little concern. They've come up with a strategy to deal with North Korea, a two-pronged strategy, my friends. And one of them is pr includes preemptive action. It's called kill chain. Here it is, guys, preemptive action. If intelligence assessments indicated that North is preparing military assets to attack South Korea, kill chain would target those assets. I mean, it would fire them. It sounds like it. For example, so would target. Uh, so uh, would target North Korea's long range artillery, which is the most dangerous in the world. Yeah, because it could really take out a, a city of over 2 million people and lickety split. That's why long range artillery would really rain down on Seoul and make for a bad day. So, so, so I was talking about it. So, hey, if we think you're going to hit us, we might hit you first. We just might, but that's also very provocative. What they miscalculate. That's what I'm saying. We are in an age where miscalculation. But see, the North Korean army is so huge. It's the biggest army in the world. Once they get going, they could blitzkrieg over South Korea. So South Korea is determined they need to be able to take preemptive action to stop this in advance. So that's one item. Their other uh, strategy is the Korean Massive Punishment Retali and Retaliation, KMPR. And in this scenario, they're going after the leadership. They're going after decapitating the leadership, hoping that the army won't know what to do if the snake's head's gone, which is typical in communist uh, and totalitarian governments that you know, soldiers can't fight without the commanders. And the, the, the tanks just roll to the stop. Well, they don't know for a fact that that would happen, but that's what they're hoping for because they can't, the army is just too big for them to deal with directly. So they got kill chain, which is a funny name for their preemptive uh, action. It's more like what I would call going after the chain of command. So they got similarly, they got kind of named backwards. But uh, in this case, they're basically saying they would level polying, that they would destroy the North Korean capital because they want to take out all of the North Korean civilian and military leadership. And this is the way they think to do it. Of course, you know, North Korea's got a whole lot of stuff underground, but this is how they see themselves doing it, my friends. Wow. So this could just happen. I mean, already North Korea, South Korean intelligence is saying that North Korea is moving missiles and stuff around as if maybe to do something. And what's their policy? If they think they're going to do something, they just said that they'd strike first, they'd do a preemptive strike. What's cooking? This is why you need to get prepared. This is why you need to share my videos. I hope this don't come to pass. I pray it don't come to pass. I pray it's just a lot of kabuki dancing and posture and, you know, buffing up the chest and beating on them and, and you know, yelling tars and yells. <laughs> Let's hope that's all it boils down to. Posturing. But it's so easy for a miscalculation now, especially these kind of official policies out there. It's so easy to have a miscalculation. Where could it go? And what is North Korea up to? What is that hermit kingdom up to? You remember I told you many times that, that you know the, the, the king of the hermit kingdom is living under grand delusion. They think they control so much information going in that kingdom. And on top of that, everybody tells him what they think is the best thing to tell them so they can keep their head on their shoulders physically, not figuratively. So information fed to him and his sense of ruling a country with such absolute power is really messing with his worldview. His worldview has got a big skew. And maybe even his sky is a blue. Who knows? Rose-colored glasses means you take in information according to the worldview and perception you already have. Everybody's got your own rose-colored glasses. And when you've been raised from a kid like that, like you know, all the rock star kids and child stars, how their worldview gets so warped to how they have problems the rest of their life. Imagine if you know you're, you know, you're raised in a royal family like in Korea, you know, the cult of personality, and it's like a religion almost. And you're the you're the dictator, God, supreme leader over a hermit kingdom with such a big military 
that everything's funded and justified on basis of paranoia against the United States. Wow. Oh, that couldn't go wrong. No, nah, no, nah, it's all just perfectly well, perfectly well. You know, there's no warning signs. It's not like the warning signs we've seen in other incidences that have occurred in this country. No, no, no. Again, let's hope. Let's pray. But so that you can make sure you got another day, prepare. Don't be scared. Be prepared. And don't panic. Never panic. You go nuts when you panic. Keep your head on your shoulder. Stay cold and collected. Calculate. Figure. Take care of yourself and your family as best as you can. Get ready, just in case. Because it's not just North Korea. It's not just Russia. It's not just Iran. It's not just China. These guys are all in cahoots to some degree. I think we could pry Russia out of that. Because Russia don't trust China either. <laughs> And maybe the people of Iran don't trust China, but the Ayatollahs do. Because the, he bought, the Xi Jinping bought those Ayatollahs a lot of time with the money he just sent over there. That's all they care about. But the people there, they don't want that. <laughs> there's a lot of, listen, there's a lot of good people in every country on earth. There's a lot of good people in Iran. There's a lot of good people in the, the People's Republic of China. And some of them may actually be in the, uh, the CCP. You know, just there because it's how they got their job and just going through the motions. I mean, the lower level guys, not the echelon top. But my friends, I'll say there's good people everywhere. People who give you a shirt off their back. People that uh, are smart, but they're living under regimes that are somewhat apart, different. And they're totalitarian. These people are kind of stuck in that situation. I hope they find their path to freedom and get out from under those yokes. We'll all be better off if they do. If we can just keep this world from going nuts, if we can just keep it glued together a couple more decades, then we're closer to being home free. If we can keep this world glued together for three more decades, I think we'll be in a whole lot better place. Can we do it? I don't know. That's why I tell you to get prepared. I hope we can. I hope we can. Let's hope for it. Let's work toward it. But be prepared just in case. Be prepared. All right. So I know you watch this first. Okay, Greg, I got it. I'll get prepared. <laughs> Let's do it. Tell your neighbors, your friends. Guys, the international tensions are off the charts. Our domestic tensions are off the charts. You know, if you're not prepping, you need to wake up and get started. All right, my friends. Enough said on that. Hope everybody has a wondrous weekend. Honestly. I'm going to rain here again all day Saturday, apparently. And I plan to do a live session tonight. <laughs> I don't know if I get this video before I do that or not. Anyway, I might start that one late. All that said... So do you, as I always do, because I appreciate you so much, my subscribers. Thank you for watching.